A Plague Tale Innocence is a game I've been very interested in for a while now. I was up to date on all the trailers, gameplay reveals, etc. Which I never do anymore unless a game is coming out that I legitimately feel like I need to see all there is before I pick the game up. The reason I was so interested in A Plague Tale is because it was giving me vibes of two games I absolutely love. Those games being Dishonored and Thief. No. Not that Thief. Never actually played these ones. No, Thief 2014. Yes, I really enjoyed Thief 2014. I know many didn't, but I did. A Plague Tale is developed by Asobo Studios, who also developed another rat game in Ratatouille. Which I find really funny and became aware of this because of my mate Nathan's video about the game. Which I highly recommend. It will be in the description below at the Checkpoint Show. Check it out. But enough stalling, you've clicked on this video either because you're a subscriber and you like what I do, or you clicked on this video because you're interested in the video, played the game and loved it, or already don't agree with the title of the video and are here to see my demise. In any of these cases, welcome. I hope you enjoy the video. I will have time codes below as I'll be splitting the video up into story, gameplay, visuals and sounds, nitpicks, and a little bow to wrap it all up with the conclusion. The story of A Plague Tale Innocence is a game set in France during the years 1348 to 1349 during the 100 Year War and the Black Death. Suffice it to say, this game is set in an era of death. Massive amounts of death. Whilst this game could have been from the perspective of a knight or a soldier, Asobe decided, and the game's subtitle being Innocence should allude to, the story here is about Amicia Darun and her younger brother Hugo. Whilst their age is not specified, you can tell Amicia is just a teenager and Hugo is just a little kid. I loved playing from this perspective because I'm the eldest of seven and the age difference between Amicia and Hugo seems similar to my age gap between my younger sister and I. So personally I found it incredibly easy to relate to Amicia being suddenly thrust into being her younger brother's guardian and having to take care of her younger brother that due to his sickness, she is very distant with in the beginning. They argue like siblings, no matter the environment, as especially Hugo doesn't really understand the gravity of the situation. So yes, acts like an annoying kid at times. What on earth are you doing? Put that mallet down. Are you stupid or what? I am not stupid. Don't shout. Children. That's enough noise. I want to see Mummy. Shut up. You're going to get us killed. Mummy will protect us. That's enough. He gets moody, even extending to gameplay where he refuses to hold your hand. This relationship between Amicia and Hugo is really well done due to the great writing between the two of them, but also the performances of Charlotte McBurney and Logan Hannon who are believable as Amicia and Hugo. Which, for both of them, this is their first voiceover roles. Serious props for this as a first attempt. The story really kicks off how bleak this game will be, right from the get-go. Amicia is out in the woods with her father and beloved pet dog. It's beautiful, bright. You're practicing with your sling, hitting targets. Your dog finds a boar. So you go to kill it, injuring it heavily as it flees. Your dog runs off to track it, and as you chase after it, following the sounds of your dog's bark, the world gets bleaker and bleaker, darker and darker. Your dog's bark quieter and quieter, until you find the boar already ravaged and your dog silent. Moving further ahead to find your dog wounded and dragged down to its death right in front of you. What the fuck? This moment here really sets the tone that just because the game is centered around children doesn't mean they aren't going to be seeing how brutal this world is. And I love it. 
This world only gets worse and worse the more you play, and you really do see the development of Amicia from the acts she is forced to commit. Perfectly shown here when she's forced to take her first life. So that's where you were. No, wait, we just want to leave. We will leave, yes, and never come back. Please, no. I, I, I didn't want to. Hugo! I'm, I'm coming! You really see her develop from a scared kid into someone who knows she needs to do anything to survive and protect her brother. You also encounter other orphans throughout the story, which I would have liked more time with each of them to get a bit more story and background for them. But the story here is about Amicia and Hugo, so it didn't really bother me too much that these characters didn't get much limelight. Amicia and Hugo do witness the bleak world and time period this game is set in, like plague ridden areas being crossed off, or even later, just plague victims being outright massacred. Battlefields filled with hundreds of dead bodies, soldiers carrying and burying their fallen soldiers, and last but certainly not least, the effects of the rats. The rats really are dangerous. You feel the fear everyone has towards them, but you also see why. The bodies torn apart, ravaged, and just how much of a threat they are. I also love that whilst Amicia does get a little numb to the things we witness as the story progresses, like killing and dead bodies, Hugo still remains a kid. He wants to see his mum again. He ventures off and finds things in the world that really do act as a ray of light. Not everything's so bleak, and Hugo, due to his sickness, has not seen a lot of the outside world. So seeing him so happy when finding flowers or frogs is really sweet and a great counter to the brutal world. The game is not all historic though, especially towards the end going into a bit more fantasy, which I was totally fine with. The Inquisition acts as the main enemy wanting to take Hugo and try and harness his sickness, and they do a great job of being genuinely intimidating. Especially Nicholas, who whilst we don't get much story or driving force behind, is genuinely scary when he is on screen. Look, I could go on and on about every little thing I loved in the story. I would even consider doing a spoiler talk later down the track when more and more people can play it for themselves. But suffice it to say, the story of A Plague Tale Innocence is beautiful, it's bleak, it's somber, it shows the growth between Amicia and Hugo, they both grow as characters, it's intense, and it all wraps up really well and it's a big reason you should experience this game. Now as much as I really do love a well done story, we are talking about a game here. Which is honestly why this game got me so interested. The game is a stealth game. You need to be smart, because whilst you can be caught by enemies and have a chance to get away, they will kill you in one hit. And whilst I don't think the stealth is revolutionary, I do think because the risk is so high with getting caught, that it really does have a great amount of strategy to each encounter. Especially when you have to also consider being safe from the rats. Amicia also has her trusty sling. I'll give it to her, she has a lethal arm to be able to kill a grown man with a small rock to the head. But yes, your only weapon for this game is the sling, but with the help of alchemy, you can also get projectiles to help you in such a variety of ways, that each encounter can be approached very differently. You can throw a rock at conveniently placed armor crates. Yes, this is very conveniently placed, but it's a video game, you gotta do what you gotta do to distract guards. Throw pots anywhere to make more noise and again distract guards. Ignite torches to again distract the guards. Honestly you do have to understand that if you want to be smart with your resources, as they are both used for upgrading your equipment and crafting these alchemy potions, 
there isn't a lot of killing enemies in this game. It makes up for it towards the end. Again, no spoilers, but seriously, the ending chapters are freaking awesome. But this game is about secretly going about your business. There will be opportunities to kill guards and soldiers, and sometimes there won't be. Each scenario brings along with it strategies that will either be for avoiding detection, or if you feel the need to be spotted, have you taken all the right steps to ensure you can kill the guards coming your way? Again, the alchemy really helps with the variety and strategy. You get flame igniters to light torches, flame extinguishers to, well you guessed it, turn the lights off, potions that cause enemies to remove their helmets, sleeping potions, etc. The standard soldier encounters as well become a hell of a lot more interesting when you need to factor in the rats. The rats can't go in the light, which as you progress, enemies will get lanterns and torches, which becomes weirdly satisfying to extinguish their flame or break their lantern as they're walking through rat infested territory. Like weirdly satisfying. The rats themselves do have a bit less strategy and act more like puzzles because again, if you're not careful, they will very quickly kill you. You have to be smart. Pay attention to unlit torches, maybe a haystack, find sticks to make a temporary torch and plan where you need to go and how much time you'll need to get there. The rats are really the star of the game. They're the biggest threat, there is hundreds on screen, yet can also be used to your advantage. You can even accidentally kill soldiers by pushing the rats back with your torch. It's really interesting as well once there is no light source meaning you need to distract the rats with food, whether that be meat you see dangling in whatever room you're in, or soldiers. Honestly, the game just feels good to play. I love the strategy when approaching new areas. I love the feeling of if I went back, how many different ways I could approach the situation. And for the game only really having one weapon, you do feel like you're a kid forced into the wrong place at the wrong time. You do also have missions without Hugo, and even a mission where you play as him. You have missions where you have the other orphans as companions, like Roderick, who can stealth kill soldiers, or Malaya, I don't know if I'm saying that right, who will open locked doors or chests for you. And the chapter you play as Hugo really does make you feel like a little kid. As I said previously, you do have the ability to upgrade yourself, like the sling to fire faster or reload quicker, pouches to carry more supplies and ammo, and later the option to upgrade some alchemy potions with how long they can be used for. The strategy even here is something that really makes the game more intense as you might want to save some supplies for your potions instead of upgrading something especially because you don't want to run out of supplies and limit your options of playing. The gameplay here is something I really enjoyed and found just immensely satisfying to pull off. The enemies and rats feel dangerous and yet fair. Gameplay may turn some people off the game if you're not into the stealth mechanics, but I honestly thought they really helped emphasize just how dangerous this world is especially for two kids to be traversing it. I'm not sure if you can tell from the rest of the video, I mean, I'm not sure how much YouTube will compress the quality, but this game looks really sell this game. I'm usually not someone who cares what the game looks like all that much, even flat out forgetting to mention it in my reviews most of the time. However, here it is a big selling point for me. All of the atrocities, the horrors that Amicia and Hugo see would not have the same impact if they didn't look this good. I mean, I was seriously in awe when I came across the battlefield scene. In a horrified awe. The game just looks good from the world to the characters and even the rats. For how many there are, they could have been just black blobs and I would have believed they were rats. But not only does it look good, it runs smooth as butter. This will be my third video in a row mentioning this, but
but no matter how good looking your game is, if it doesn't run well, if the frame rate isn't consistent, then we have a problem. But I played this on the Xbox One X, and honestly, it looks good and it runs great, not noticing any drops in frames during my playthrough. So we have a good looking, well running Wombo Combo. Unfortunately, I'm not a massive fan of some of the tracks. Like, I know some parts are trying to portray this feeling of tense, edge of a knife sort of stuff. But man, a few tracks honestly hurt my ears a little bit. Which is a shame, because on the whole, I really enjoyed the soundtrack, and it really, for the most part, does hit the mark of what the scene is trying to portray, and most times, is quite beautiful. Also, hitting metal with rocks or the crack of your sling when it fires has that real punch to it. Even killing an enemy makes you feel that impact through your speakers or the hundreds of rat squeaks. The sound, for the most part, really does, again, help emphasize what you are seeing on screen. So I have been really positive in this video so far, and honestly, what do you expect? Didn't you see the title of the video? But as I said, no game is flawless, and whilst I don't have outright issues with the game, I do have my nitpicks. First off, the game does have some glitches I encountered, like here, where I got stuck in the fire, where I just couldn't get out, forcing me to restart at the checkpoint. Which thankfully, the game's checkpoints are really well paced, so I just had to redo the encounter. I also got caught here, but I must have been too far in the corner forcing me to stare into this scary image here. Like, what am I looking at here, and why is it so intimidating? I will also say that I would have liked to have seen a stealth option involving maybe bludgeoning an enemy with a rock? or something like that, because at times it does feel like Amicia would have picked something up to help her take down enemies. There is also a weird visual decision where things slightly off to the side get this blurry effect. Just takes away a little bit from how good looking this game is. Also, at times during the story, I found Amicia was a little too harsh on Hugo for no real reason. Like he was being pretty normal, yet Amicia cracked the sooks at him. Really, as I said though, these are just nitpicks. I don't think these are issues that take away from the game at all. Look, if you couldn't tell from this video, I absolutely loved my time in A Plague Tale Innocence. So much so, that when I finally sat down to play it, I didn't get back up until I was at the credits. Clearly, I went for a couple of pee breaks and had a few smokes, but that doesn't have the same dramatic effect. Yes, I sat down and in one sitting played through this game, which, as you can see here from my recording, was just under 10 hours. I don't do this for any games, as usually I want to have a break and do something else. But here I was totally immersed, I didn't want to put the controller down, and it didn't feel like I was there for 10 hours. I honestly believe what Asobo did here with A Plague Tale is something incredible. Even before the game launched, you could tell how much passion they had for their game. Even having one of the producers retweeting a poll I did on whether to pick up this or Rage 2. Me. Some nobody on the internet. 
The amount of praise I can give this game just doesn't feel like enough, but I can wholeheartedly say, if for whatever reason you can only play one game for 2019, make sure it's a Plague Tale Innocence. I cannot recommend the game high enough, and if you see it, for whatever price, go out and pick it up. I understand this game may not be for everyone, but for me, that's just how much I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. What a game. I hope I gave this game a bit more light if you were on the fence about it, and I hope I did the game justice. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave it a like, comment your thoughts on A Plague Tale if you've played it, or if not, just what you think about the video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. I do videos on the regular, even just a couple of days ago, having a Days Gone video. If you're interested, check that out. Also, my review for Rage 2 should be out sometime next week, so look forward to that. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter, at MareHairBear, so go and leave me a follow if you're interested in games I'm picking up and gaming opinions and thoughts as I play through the games I review. But this video has gone on quite long enough. So I hope you guys are all having a great day. And I'll see you in the next video.